Hey there everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Adrian and this is Rabona TV's RTV Daily, the semi-daily show that may not have an episode tomorrow, but I will have a different video, a fun history video. Okay, Women's World Cup semi-finals, Netherlands versus Italy had a great first half that saw opportunities fly in either direction, with Italy mostly striking on the counter while the Netherlands played their possession game. It seems like everyone was fired up for this match, the Italians, the Dutch, the referee, they were all at each other's throats throughout, which is great to see. I love seeing that fire, that passion. And in the second half, the Netherlands really grabbed hold of the Italians by the throat, smothering them with their possession, stifling every single attack. I mean, they didn't have a strike at goal in the second half until the 82nd minute. They barely got close to the Netherlands 18. The opener came from a set piece, predictably, as Miedma, predictably, had headed Spitzi's delivery past Giuliani. Spitzi, by the way, had almost scored an incredible free kick moments before that, but it just swung wide at the last moment. Then, 10 minutes after the first goal, the Netherlands added yet another from a set piece with Stephanie van der Graat using her height advantage to the fullest to rise above the Italians and power a header past Giuliani once again. That was all that was on offer in this one. The Netherlands deserve to go through as they're superior to the Italians, at least in this occasion, but it's not all gloom for Italy. I mean, look at how far this team has come. Now that Italian clubs have women's teams, the quality in Italian women's football has gone way up and it will only get even better. While the Dutch looked great in possession and from set pieces, they did look like they ran out of ideas in the attack from open play, you know? Like, they weren't threatening enough from anything besides the set pieces, really, but hey man, they've made their first ever Women's World Cup semi-final, so shout out to them. Germany versus Sweden was the more interesting of the two matches, which supplied us with two goals in the first 22 minutes, largely in part to both the German and Swedish center backs looking quite poor and generally shaky in the early exchanges. Germany scored first as Bayern Munich's Lina Magul slipped in between the Swedish defenders, Fischer and Sembrandt, did well to take the ball down from Dabritz and find the corner. 1-0 Germany just like that. But just six minutes later, Sofia Jakobsen latched onto a long ball over the top, again, right between the German defenders, and while Schult got a piece of it in the German goal, it found the way to the back of the net. 1-1. Solid game, this one. The Swedes played as they have all tournament, really. Defend as a team, stay organized, draw out the opponent, and try to hurt them on the counter. That's exactly what they did against Canada, and that's what they did against Germany as well. They're not a team that needs the ball in order to win, as they have talented attackers and even more talented defenders. This is the same thing that pissed off the Americans in the, what was it, 2015 Olympics? Right after the half, Jakobsen launched a ball into the box that was headed on goal but saved by Schult. However, she didn't have a chance on the rebound as Stina Blackstenius knocked it in. 2-1 Sweden, and after the getting their goal, they went back to defense first, attacking second, threatening the German back line on just a couple of occasions. The German attackers never really found their groove in the attack, obviously, and late on, Marina Hegering had an opportunity to level things, but the defender's header was always rising. Sweden defeated Germany in a World Cup match for the first time, 2-1, and they became the first team in this World Cup's knockout rounds to get a come-from-behind victory. So. The semis are as follows, and they'll kick off on Tuesday. USA versus England, and the Netherlands versus Sweden. Should be a fun couple of matches, especially looking forward to that USA versus England game. If you haven't watched one of these Women's World Cup matches yet, definitely watch the USA versus England. Two great attacking teams going at it. Okay, it's unfortunate that the Copa America has been a rather dull affair this summer. The tickets are overpriced, so you can't rely on the crowds to create a decent atmosphere, and the football, besides maybe Japan versus Uruguay, has been fairly forgettable. Some attribute that to the aging stars at this Copa, which I guess you could say about Suarez and Cavani. Godin as well, though it's less apparent with him in defense. This has definitely been a bit of a dud of a Copa America so far, in my opinion. And this was another not spectacular match, especially for the Uruguayans, who played well but couldn't finish. The first real chance of the match, the first real one, which by the way, almost every opportunity fell to the Uruguayans in this one, came thanks to some tap dancing from Luis Suarez. His strike was saved by Gaes, but Cavani was there for the rebound from six yards away, and he skied it like an absolute casual. Speaking of casual, that's a good way of describing Peru's defense early doors as they were constantly giving the ball away. In the 28th minute, Uruguay put the ball in, but it was called back due to Nandez being offside. Unlucky for Uruguay there. 
Right call though. Cavani and Suarez really look their age at times in this match, and that's why I brought it up earlier. Suarez especially has lost quite a few yards of pace in the last season or so, and he looks laborious on the ball sometimes. Trying to beat players one-on-one, -on -one, you guys know what I mean by the Suarez chop, where he sort of tries to turn the defender inside out with his touches that seem out of his reach, but he manages to reach the ball and cut it back the other way and change direction. God, this is horrible to describe. So things like this are sometimes hard to watch from him now, and Uruguay in general was hard to watch in front of goal. Godin blew a chance from six yards out in the second half, and minutes later, Cavani scored again, but was again offside. Then Suarez scored, but again offside. Man, I mean, there was three goals, none of them counted, all correctly ruled out for offside, so at least there were opportunities in this one, but Peru offered absolutely nothing. Three attempts, zero on target, Uruguay dominated them, and guess what happened in the shootout? Uh, well, Suarez had his attempt saved, and every single taker from each team converted theirs following that, so Uruguay were eliminated, 5-4 on penalties, Peru after getting smashed 5-0 by Brazil and not registering a single shot on target against Uruguay will advance to the semi-finals to take on Chile. Clásico del Pacifico. Le coup, le coup africain alors en partie avec uh, le match Mojotania contre Angola 0-0. What about Cameroon versus Ghana? Oh, 0-0 there as well. Bennett versus Guinea-Bissau. That's got to provide at least one goal, right? No! Nobody scored yesterday in Africa, man. Three nil-nil draws. So like, I don't know. In group E, all of the teams are still alive, everyone from top to bottom. And in group F, the exact same situation. Everyone is still alive. Because everyone was doing the exact same things out there. That was fast. I mean, I don't know, there's not, there's not much I can say about the African Cup of Nations right now. They didn't provide me with any talking points, really. All right, Gold Cup something no Canadian really cares to talk about right now. But I'm gonna talk about him anyways. <laughs> Canada versus Haiti, a semi-final position on the line, and this Canadian team tricked us all into thinking that they were decent. Just like I'm starting to think that John Herdman tricked us all into thinking that he was decent. I don't know about him anymore. His substitutions are nonsensical. Davies is wasted at left back. He has to play on the wing for Canada. He has to. So, Canada started the match poorly, but quickly started to dominate Haiti, and as you would expect Canada to do that, right? At least, if you weren't Canadian, you would only expect them to beat Haiti if you aren't Canadian. <sighs> We've been burned too many times. We've seen this team lose to all sorts of Caribbean nations along the way. It's not a surprise to us at all. But anyways, Jonathan David scored a stunning goal 18 minutes in. He's been the only bright spot for Canada. That was his sixth of the tournament, making him the top scorer in the tournament for now. Cavallini scored a second for Canada as he rounded the keeper, his fifth goal. That was it from Canada in this match. That was all they offered. Because in the second half, they fell completely apart and Haiti played extremely well. Credit to them. A massive credit to Haiti, who played like a team and got what they deserved at the end of it. Just as Canada also got what they deserved. 2-0 down, Haiti scored in the 50th thanks to a massive blunder of a back pass to Borian, which I thought he could have done better with it, but anyways, Nazan chased down and deflected the ball into the goal and Canada had lost the mental game right there. Right there, the crushing burden of the loser teams from the past was too much for them and they were finished, you could see it. Because Godinho lost his head and went flying into a tackle 20 minutes later to give away a penalty, which Basile converted 2-2. And finally, the pièce de résistance just six minutes later, Dukin's Nazon played a peach of a ball between Davies and Cornelius. Davies was completely asleep. And Guerrier, the warrior, stepped around Borian and with some slick touches, tucked it away. 3-2 Haiti, Canada eliminated. Haiti make their first Gold Cup semi-final and deservedly so. As I said to someone on Twitter, it's in the DNA of Canada to choke like this. It's disappointing, but I mean, shame on me and any other Canadians for thinking that this team was any different from the past teams, that they would offer us something different from past teams. God, Montreal loses today, Canada loses today, Pacific FC is gonna lose tomorrow. It's a great time for my teams. God! Anyway, Mexico versus Costa Rica lifted my spirits because this match was completely open throughout it. Chances flew for each team, with the opening goal being the perfect synopsis of the match as a whole. Mexico went rushing down the pitch, were ultimately stopped by Costa Rica, who collected and attacked in the other direction, who were stopped by Mexico. Mexico head back down the pitch, 
Pizzato scores to Jimenez, 1-0 Mexico, fast and furious, end-to-end -end action. It was incredible to watch. In the second half, Costa Rica found their way back into this game thanks to a penalty call that, for me, I'm not sure it should have been given. Oh, and there's no VAR in this tournament, so you can't rely on that. Can't rely on it either way, it seems. Joel Campbell muscled his way through on goal, and Luis Rodriguez reached in with a tackle. You can see that he got the ball first, and Campbell kicked Rodriguez with his follow-through. Plus, the contact happened outside the box. If this was a situation where a player had a handful of the other shirt from outside the box and they eventually dragged them down in the box, that could be a penalty. But for a trip like this outside of the box, even if he falls inside, it has to go where the contact happened. No pen for me, but Brian Ruiz converted 1-1. No complaints on my end though, because this match was amazing. Mexico had the better of the chances, but Costa Rica still provided a threat. Each keeper was made to work, like in the 86th minute when Rodriguez, who had just come into the pitch, directed a shot towards the goal that Moreira pushed off the Costa Rican bar. So extra time, editor Adrian will take over because it's 9pm and I gotta get going on filming, which I have already started filming, but you know what I mean, I need to get going on editing. Adrian does. What? Just let me go to bed. <laughs> Mexico won. In a shootout. Ochoa was the hero. So they will go on to face Haiti. Mexico versus Haiti, maybe Haiti can throw up another surprise? I don't know. It's hard to doubt them now. I mean, they did beat Canada, they did well against Costa Rica as well, so... Who knows? I still think that Mexico is the favorite, of course, but... Don't sleep on the Haitians. Alright guys, I hope you're having an enjoyable weekend. Mine has been pretty whatever, but... Things always improve. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video, then a thumbs up is always nice to see. My name is Adrian. I love you. Take care.